Today is the first full day of fall. Summer has been digging its claws in across the southern states as temperatures still remain well into the 90s, with 100s in the southwest deserts. Out in the Atlantic, Hurricane Gabrielle Category 4 heads eastward with barely a mention on the news. 450 miles east of Bermuda and almost 1,000 miles from the U.S. coast. This is the infrared Dvorak imagery going back about 48 hours. We start out with a central dense overcast, not really a sign of an eye. And then early yesterday, there's the eye taking shape. You can see that the symmetric bands around the storm become a lot more prominent, and we get that intensification rapidly to Category 4. And then going into today, it continues tracking to the northeast, and then the eye starts losing some definition. So that's about where we're at right now. Here is one final look at Gabrielle starting out this morning on visible imagery. Quite a interesting eye there, but obviously it does start filling in. It does remain Category 4, but it is slowly weakening. The surface map for the lower 48 shows a cold front moving through New Mexico, Texas, and Kansas, and a second reinforcing surge moving through Colorado. The center of that cold air centered on Wyoming and Colorado. There's a cutoff low off of the California coast right there. That's going to have increasing impacts over the next couple days as it tracks inland. And another Pacific front approaching the northwestern U.S. In the northeastern U.S., the region has been firmly in a warm advection pattern. Record daily rainfall amounts were set yesterday at several stations in the Midwest. Zanesville, Ohio, I think it's in this area here, 1.28 inches. Sault Ste. Marie, 1.41. La Crosse, Wisconsin, 1.7 inches. And Rochester, Minnesota, 3.28 inches. Carbondale, Illinois, 1.44, so quite a bit of rain distributed around the Midwest region. And we do have this little vortex up there around Sault Ste. Marie, so showers continue across parts of Ontario, where Environment Canada has continued advisories for heavy rain for one to two inches. Today, a warm day across the northeastern U.S., 70s in most areas, and 80s from Boston down to Virginia. In the southeastern U.S., summer-like conditions are in place. We do have a weak boundary across southern Florida, producing extensive showers and storms. And the sea breeze is active in a few areas, the Atlantic coast, the Carolinas, and back in Texas and Louisiana. It is hot with widespread mid-90s across Louisiana into central Alabama and southern Georgia, also much of Florida seeing low to mid-90s. In the southern plains, we get into an increasingly bear clinic setup. Frontal system moving through Oklahoma into Arkansas and trailing through West Texas. Numerous showers and storms developing along that front and also the warm front extending through Arkansas. That's a potent area for possible supercell formation. And with that, we have an enhanced risk of severe weather across much of western Arkansas into the Fort Smith area and we do have a tornado watch for that area until 10 p.m. tonight. The radar imagery has not shown any clear indication of tornadic storms, but numerous severe storms from Clinton, Arkansas, back to Fort Smith and back across the McAllister and uh, Durant area of Oklahoma. We are expecting more development further down the line. Let's take a look at the high-resolution rapid refresh. This is the general forecast for this evening. The colored shading indicates vorticity, relative vorticity, in other words, where we have cyclonic turning of the winds. So here, this is painting out the subsynoptic low pressure area associated with that warm front. And here is a possible meso low in the Fort Smith area. So this is at 3 p.m. Also, the red lines, those indicate convergence of the wind field. So those are two different types of wind circulations. Here we have the rotation by the colored shading and we have the convergence indicated by the red lines. 
and we go forward through the afternoon here, you can see that organized area of storms there near Fort Smith. Additional storms forming all the way down towards Ardmore. And as we go into the evening hours, 7, 8 p.m., numerous storms all down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and those organize further and move into East Texas. In the northern plains, cool northerly flow and some wildfire smoke coming down through the Dakotas. We do find cool weather in Colorado today. A high of 54 expected at Denver with 69 at Pueblo with westerly flow down south. Highs will be in the 50s and 60s in the mountains and above 9,000 feet. We have a winter weather advisory in central Colorado. 4 to 10 inches of wet snow expected through the remainder of today. That includes Interstate 70 between Idaho Springs and Silverthorne. It's getting to be about that season. Hard to believe. The entire San Luis Valley around Alamosa under a frost advisory tonight. Temperatures will fall to 30 degrees. Also a frost advisory in parts of south central Wyoming. The Medicine Bow Mountains southeast of Rollins under a winter weather advisory for 4 to 8 inches of snow above 8,500 feet. In the southwestern U.S., we go from cold weather in Colorado to hot in the desert southwest. The Four Corners, looking at mild weather today, 70s and 80s for highs, but we get up into those 100s. Phoenix, 102 for this evening, Tucson, 98, and Las Vegas, 96. Flood watch has been issued for southeastern Arizona, including Tucson, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. A disturbance offshore from California will move inland and affect that area in a few days. In the short term, the effects will be on California. Right now, we do have a heat advisory in the Bay Area that includes San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, Fremont, Brentwood, and Concord. Temperatures will be 5 to 15 degrees above normal. Highs in the mid-80s in the San Francisco Bay Area to 100 in the East Bay region. San Francisco expecting a high of 85. Elsewhere in California, downtown LA, 88. Upper 90s in the Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley, 98 at Sacramento with 99 at Redding. And relief is on the way as that disturbance will move inland. We'll cover that shortly. In the Pacific Northwest, fair skies. In fact, I would call that clear. Very warm temperatures in the Willamette Valley, 86 at Portland, Salem, and Eugene. A little bit cooler in Seattle and east of the Cascades, looking at low to mid-80s. And we head out west into the Pacific. We pick up this frontal system extending from British Columbia out into the deep Pacific. Very stormy in the Bering Sea and the northwestern Gulf of Alaska. Gale warnings are in effect. Southwest winds up to 45 knots later tonight into tomorrow with seas up to 19 feet. ADAC in the Aleutians, somewhere in here, they're expecting 70 mile an hour winds this afternoon. Those problems will move out into the Gulf of Alaska. And by tomorrow, we'll see south winds up to 35 knots most of the day. Pretty calm in the interior, 30s and even 20s up in the Brooks Range as we transition into winter. In Canada, a warning for wildfire smoke continues from Great Slave Lake around Yellowknife and back to Fort Providence. Further south, the rainfall warning is in effect in the Yellowhead area, northwest of Jasper. Behind this cold front, we're expecting up to two inches of rain possible there. Very warm through the Canadian prairies, up almost near 80 degrees in parts of Saskatchewan. And yeah, we even do have 80s there in southern Alberta. In parts of central Ontario, north of Sault Ste. Marie, we have rainfall warnings for 1 to 1.5 inches of rain. We had a severe thunderstorm warning earlier around Barrie down in this area here for gusty convective winds and heavy rain. And further out east in northern Newfoundland, in the Great Harbor area northward, a frost advisory posted for tonight. Temperatures down to 34 are expected in this cold advection regime. We are heading into that time of year where the upper dynamics become more significant. 
This is the 500 millibar heights and vorticity showing a cutoff high up there in Oregon and a cutoff low off of the California coast, forming a Rex block. You could probably also call that an Omega block based on that, but this low is almost lodged directly south of that cutoff high. Not quite, it's kind of a hybrid of both blocking types, but it is going to be temporary, so we're just kind of splitting hairs here. Upper level low across northeastern Colorado, which is a reflection of that cold air advection. Very cold temperatures at the lower levels in the Denver area, and a polar front jet, jet max across the Four Corners region. So those are some features to look at. Also a vortex in the Sault Ste. Marie area, and possibly another one further west in northern Wisconsin. And we check out the weather over the next 24 hours. This upper level low drifts up the California coast, puts the area under increasingly strong upper level flow, and also advects monsoon moisture northward. This compact trough moves out into Oklahoma, and for the rest of the week, upper level low across the central part of California for Thursday night into Friday, and troughing all through the Great Lakes into the Gulf Coast area. And this will bring all of the precipitation gradually eastward. On Friday, we can see that low pressure area still wandering around Southern California, gradually moving inland. And we'll see those rain chances start to pick up over the next few days across much of the southwestern U.S. Then that trough will get lifted to the northeast. Let's take a look at those temperatures over the next several days, starting with today. You can see all that very warm weather there in Texas, almost near 100 at Abilene, and quite warm out there in the southwest deserts. For tomorrow, warming up quite a bit there in Montana, 90s, starting to show up all across Oregon. And well up into the mid 100s in the desert southwest so some areas of the country really doesn't look much like fall yet and there's those 80s back across the northern plains for thursday and we go into friday and the weekend looking a little bit more mild in most areas down into the 90s in the southwest deserts lots of 80s in texas so that's looking a little bit better same story for sunday and Monday also looking quite mild. So we'll put the weather maps into motion, starting out with right now. This frontal system gradually shifts to the east into the central Mississippi River Valley and down to the Gulf Coast for tomorrow night. Also that Pacific system working inland into central California. Everything gradually shifting eastward. And then we go into Friday. This system starting to cross through the southwestern U.S. Our Atlantic system already clearing the coast, but some residual moisture down in the Carolinas and Georgia. Some migratory systems working through the northern U.S. over the weekend. Precipitation chances continue in New Mexico, up into Colorado through late weekend. And here comes another Pacific weather system into the Pacific Northwest for early next week. And looks like another one for midweek. And that brings us to the end of the period. Looks like some possibly inclement weather through the southeastern U.S. as this strong gradient sets up between the Carolinas and the Gulf. Here is the very latest GFS, and you'll notice the finely enhanced Bermuda. So we we'll always know where that is. Anyway, there's Gabrielle heading off to the east. We're going to watch two different areas, one right here and another across Puerto Rico. And you'll notice that they both undergo development. And I don't see anything that looks like a hurricane here, although possibly a tropical storm. And this always means the potential for a Fujiwara effect as those circulations interact just uh, southwest of Bermuda. This is going to be for early next week. And of course, this far out, even 144 hours out, is kind of indefinite. And there's been some inconsistency between the models. So this is one potential outcome. We don't know if this is actually going to happen. But it does look like maybe that Bermuda Triangle area is going to become a little bit more uh, lively, I guess, over the next several days. That's something we're going to have to watch. So the east coast of the U.S., there is the potential for something to come on shore there, or at least graze the eastern U.S. next week. 
and we're running a little bit late so let me go ahead and put this out i appreciate you tuning in and watching and we'll see you back here for another episode on friday hope you have a great middle of your week take care bye bye